Hi, welcome to the Zoom Room and Paint with Heart Studio. I'm Cindy Harrison. I am a decorative painter and I've been painting for over 20 years. I've been published in um, magazines without <laughs> the US and, and um, Asia. And I've been teaching actually throughout the US at different con conferences, Seattle and San Diego, Chicago, Ohio, uh, <laughs> Massachusetts. So yeah, I've I, uh, been around. But I'm still new to the industry to most people. And my goal here is to teach the world to paint one brushstroke at a time. And to do that, I need to reach up and, and connect with all of you. And I hope that you join us in the Zoom room if you are not here tonight. We have some people here tonight and thank you very much for showing up. And uh, you're gonna make this an awesome episode. I just know it, I feel it in my bones and we are gonna have a lot of adventure with our guns <laughs> and roses, which I haven't made yet. But I have, I have made them before, so it's not like I don't know how to do it. So I will show you in a second. We're going to start now, and I want to introduce, before we start, my co-host, Melissa Reyes. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Melissa Reyes, and um, pardon me for being a little parched. It's really hot here in Southern California. So I'll say I've got my gun glaring and ready to go. So I just want to say hi to everybody and let me know if you have any questions. I'm your co-host. My name again is Melissa Reyes. You can find me at Ms. Melissa. And I'm really happy to be here with Paint with Heart. First off on our wooden boxes, if, you have, if you've done a wooden surface and you're starting with a wooden surface, I sealed it with multi-purpose sealer. I sanded it. And you can use one of those um, sanding discs. I put it over here. You can use one of these, or if you have sandpaper, use sandpaper. And then to wipe off the dust, that's another thing I had. I had um, one of those, um, what are the tacky cloths? Tacky cloths. And it's, they're kind of icky. I have a tactile issue. Ooh, everyone in New Hampshire knows it. I don't like touching things that are sticky. <laughs> so I try not to use the tack cloth, and I use my apron or something. But um, but anyway, you get the dust off, put one coat of white paint. So it's very, it's, it's not solid. You're going to see the, the background through it, but that's what you're going to do. Put that aside. Take out your paper plates. That's, that's what we're going to work on right now, is making those paper roses that I promised you all week that I would show you how to make. So... If you don't have paper plates, you can use manila folder. If you have an old manila folder hanging around, you can also use white cardstock. But whatever it is, you want it to have some body. You want that, that firm, that firm uh, stiff kind of uh, body to, to the roses. Otherwise, they're just going to flop around and tear. And that's not fun, right? Um, I'm going to, my favorite color of the day. We're going to use bright salmon, so it kind of matches my nails. And I am going to paint the smooth part of my paper with this color. And I'm going to use a, a large brush. I like using uh, larger brushes when I'm working with a big surface. It's like, you know, you wouldn't want to paint a house with a brush that's only you know, a half an inch thick, right? I mean, why? Because it'll take you forever. So I'm just going to pick up some paint, globs of paint, and I'm going to paint my, my plate. So you go ahead and you do the same or go grab a snack and your favorite beverage while I'm painting this because I hate to bore people to death. And while you're out there grabbing yourself a a nice tropical fruity drink. I'll have one too, please. <laughs> I like anything that's fruity. Anything made with daiquiris, a melon, I mean, sorry. What is it, Midori? The green stuff. That sounds so good. I I'm like thinking, I'm drinking my um, Moscow Mule over here. Uh-huh. <laughs> don't, and that wasn't what choked me. I don't know what happened, but uh, I got all choked up because I'm so excited for, to be here. And as soon as Cindy started talking, about it, and she said, "Quiet, everybody," I went <gasps> and I breathed the wrong way and swallowed. <laughs> <laughs> it's all over. 
And that's what happens. You're not supposed to inhale it. I inhaled tea once and my daughter, she just made me laugh. She just looked at me and she made me laugh when I inhaled hot tea. Oh. And it paralyzed my, my windpipe. Yeah. And she looked at me and she's like, are you okay? And I'm shaking my head, no. <laughs> and yeah. I have to tell myself mentally, breathe. It's okay, breathe. And oh my God, I didn't have a voice for a while because it was paralyzed. My it was paralyzed. It was like, yeah, don't ever do that again. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, and uh, Roman, my husband and son are here and they're like, are you okay? Are you okay? And I was just coughing. But, um, but I am, I'm okay. And I'm so excited to follow along with you and I'm going to catch up and do the, um, the plate. Are you doing the plate too, Julie? <laughs> She is yes, that. Oh, awesome. Okay. No water. No water in the paint. Okay. Good to know. Because you want, you want to sew. That looks orange on my screen. Does it look orange to you guys? Yeah, it does look orange. Well, it's really, it's really salmon. It really is. It's not orange. So, um, I finished painting the top of my box, but I'm also, um, before I start on the, on the plate, I'm going to paint the side. Okay, go for it. <laughs> So I'm going to do two with the salmon color, and I think I want to do one with a different color. Oh, purple. Let's do purple. I don't know. I don't like that one. That's, that's my problem is, how about blue? Blue? There are blue flowers in the world, right? Yeah. I'm going to do, this is a, one of the new colors, Aqua Sky. And so isn't that bright salmon. Those are two new deco art colors that just came out this year. So I need to play with them. Now, I didn't tell you how many plates you should have, but I want to do three roses. And I know roses aren't blue, probably, but you know what? <laughs> We're just having fun. What does it matter, right? So I'm gonna do one blue, two salmon, and then my fourth plate, I'm gonna make green. Guess what that's gonna be for? The leaves. Because flowers need leaves. And I probably have enough here to make more than just three flowers and a few leaves, but I'm gonna use the leaves, but I'm gonna use Hauser medium green. It's a nice medium green value. I can highlight and shade and give dimension. So how long have you been painting, Liz? And the green didn't cover as well as the other two colors did. So I'm going to dry that and then put another coat on there. And then get your pencils or pens ready after the paint is dry. Now, you can also paint on the back side if you want to, because the back side will show. For, the, for those roses that I did on there, I did paint the back sides as well. So maybe that's what I'll do while the green's drying, is I'll go and paint the back side of the salmon. Because this way you don't have to worry about the white showing through. I actually, this is kind of bright, but I actually like that color. That's my new color. That's my new branding color. <laughs> but. I know it probably, it may not matter with the paper plate, um, but what brush are you using that you have stuck in your mouth right now? Um, it's my three-quarter inch wash brush. 
Yeah, it's a three quarter inch wash brush and these are out by Shark and they have little sparklies. I don't know if you can tell, but it's a crystal um, handle with little sparkles in them. And I like these the best. Okay. I'm very new to this. Sorry to you 40 years and 27 years and 20 years, but um, my medium of choice is uh, Sharpie markers. <laughs> <laughs> whole thing is very different to me. So while that's drying, how we're doing there? Okay. If it's still, if it, if when you touch it, it's cold. It might still be a little damp. I'm gonna hit it with the blow dryer. So excuse my blow dryer. Okay. Now. Not to rush people, but I'm going to move on. And at any point in time, I will repeat myself a million times. It'll be fine. This is a circle, a jumbo circle template. Now, guess what? If you don't have a jumbo circle temple, is it the, no, it's not the end of the world. Cause guess what? You have lids, right? We all have lids. You have lids, the removable lids to, uh, the oatmeal, you know, the canister of oatmeal, not that you want a rose that big, but I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, you've got lids, you've got glasses, glasses, if you have circular glasses of not, not the square ones, but the circle ones, you can put your glass upside down and you can trace around that. You've plastic got cup, plastic cup will give you two sizes. Off yep, the right. And you've got, you know, lids to containers of decoupage and you have the bottom and top two different sizes so yeah so find something round and we're going to create flowers circles i'm gonna go i think i'm gonna go with the two and a quarter i don't know let's try it's an experiment what the heck right and I probably don't need two paper plates. I probably have enough with this one. I am gonna go with my, see if this pencil shows up. Oh, if I miss, make a mess here. Okay. I have a, a pencil that has yellow lead in it. And I'm gonna see if that shows up. So, yep, it shows up. I wanna make two that size. Okay, see, I didn't need a second one. And then, is the blue dry? It's still wet. On the green, I didn't paint, I didn't paint the other side, but on the green, you're going to create, if you have an idea of what a leaf looks like, can you see that? Yes. So make some leaves. And if you have a leaf punch, you can go right ahead and punch out some leaves as well. And if you didn't draw them quite perfect, you can, when you cut them out, cut them out perfect. <laughs> So let's see, we have two, I wonder if I can get a third one out of there. Maybe, no, I could have, I'm gonna use my second one and I'm gonna cut a third one. You know, you can't ever have enough, right? So if I do three the same size here, And then, what do I do with it? Okay. I'm gonna go smaller on this one. And we did, what did we do? Two and a quarter there. So let's go with, we did two and a half. So let's go with two. Let's see about that, how many I can get out of here. What I'm gonna do after I'm done 
tracing these circles on, I am going to cut them out. Always make extras in case you mess up, right? So, on this, we can go in and you can add more paint if you want to them, or you can go ahead and just cut them out. I'm going to add a little bit more paint to. So with your scissors, and I don't know if you all are aware, but these tonic scissors by Tim Holtz, love them. They're very sharp and very easy to use. They are comfortable handles and they don't stick to adhesive. So if you are cutting tape, they won't, it won't stick to it. And if you're, if you're going to have your leaves raised off your surface, you're going to want to um, paint the backs of them as well. If your pencil lines show up on your, um, you know, if you didn't cut the pencil lines off, just take your eraser and you can erase them off. Okay, I'm thinking if I did one big red uh, salmon one and three, three blues, what do you think? That looks good. Okay. Now, okay. How many play? I have, I have two pink and one green. Yep. Okay. So you want to cut, you want to cut. Um, in your case, if you're going to do all your flowers pink, you want to cut three of them. Okay. So you're gonna. So I muted Jilly. Sorry, Jilly. <laughs> if you want to talk. <laughs> um, so. If you have one color flower, you want three of them. So you need to cut three circles. Okay, Melissa? Okay. The green of leaves. Okay, so here's my question. So now that they're dry, I'm gonna draw circles and on the green I'm gonna draw leaves, right? Yep. yep. On the color, you're drawing circles, and on the green, you're drawing leaves. And I'm getting three or four circles out of each plate? Um, it depends on the size of the circles. I got two. I suppose I could have gotten three out of this, but I only got two out of it. I didn't, I didn't plan it too well. I went right. Oh, I, <laughs> I did the eye thing, you know. Oh, look at that. You can have a glass now, too. I could, oh, instead of being a loaf of bread on Snapchat, I can be a plate and then everyone's going to think it's a filter and want one. Can <laughs> you emoji, uh, um, what is it called? No, I need your help. You know that. Fit emoji, fit, emo fit emoji. Right. So the top of my, these, are, these roses are going to go on the top of my box, if I'm understanding this correctly, right? So make different sizes because you don't know which rose you're going to end up with liking the most. Okay. Okay. So I did two and a quarter. My box is, my box lid is six inches. Well, I did two, the, two this size and then four this size. And again, I might not use all of them on this particular project. I might just use, a, you know, one of this and two of that or whatever. It depends on when I, when I get to that point and put them on there and see how they look. But I'm going to make them all up because I know that I can use them for something down the road in the future. And these two little leaves, I might not even, 
might not even use because they look too small. I'm going to use the bigger ones. Yeah, so I'm excited. So think so well, you won't need me anymore. Oh, that's not true. Just so you know, she does need me. She's not always this happy and hyper. Sometimes it's all business. So I provide the comic relief. <laughs> and ask the questions when I get too far ahead. So there's, there's, ooh, there's never a stupid question. And if there's anything, you know what? If you think there's a question you have in mind to ask and you're afraid to ask it and you think, oh, it's a silly question. Probably everyone already knows it. Bet you they don't. And so that's what Melissa is good for. And so I'm gonna just move on to this here for a second. It's the leaves. If this thing is a stylus, and it has a ball, a metal ball on the end on both sides. One's bigger, one's smaller. And I'm going to take the small one and, and do a thing called scoring. And I'm going to score the leaf. So I start from, now if you need to take your pencil and draw where you want to score it, I never score it straight down the center. So, I always kind of make it curved. And then with their ball of your stylus, I'm going to push, make an indentation. And it doesn't go all the way to the end. It just about three quarters of the way up. Can you all see that? So I'm scoring that. What that does is allow me to roll it, roll it up like that. So you can paint the back side if you're gonna, if your back side's gonna be showing. And you can warm the paper up with your heat of your finger and you can actually roll the paper. So it kind of gives it a little bit of life to have that paper rolled. You can go and erase your lines after you scored it. They might not come off because you've now set them into the, into the paper and you don't have to fold them just yet. I'm going to go and add um, some foliage green to my leaf. I'm going to give my leaf a highlight. I am going to take a flat brush or you can use an angle. Let's see, I have this angle brush. And do you all know how to do side loads? For those of you who don't, I loaded my brush in the water. So see how shiny it is? So I'm going to take it and I'm going to place it onto my paper towel until, see the shine went away? Flip it over, tap it quickly, up and down. So now it still has water in it, but it's not um, soaking wet. On the the toe, which is this part of my brush, and that's the heel. So the longer hairs are the toe. I am going to pick up on the corner of my brush some of that green. And I'm going to work it across. I can bring that up here. Work it across into my brush. I can flip the brush over this way and work it into that puddle. So I'm always putting the toe into the puddle of paint. See how I'm doing that? And then when I come over here, I put the paintbrush with the toe part against the outer edge and I go across my leaf and it should fade away.
Okay, so I'll do that again. The brush has got clean water in it. I'm gonna tap it till it goes away, tip it over, tap it quickly, pick up on the toe, work it this way, work it that way, till it, all the paint is in the brush. And I would flip it, but then I would be in this puddle and I don't wanna pick that paint up, so I'm not gonna flip it. Now I'm gonna go against the, against, yeah, it has a T on it, against the vein line here. That vein line that we scored, okay? And I'm going to start on a chisel and work into that. And that might be a little thick, so I can always come back with the water. And wash it off. So if it's too thick, you go back and just wet it. That's how we're going to add a little bit of highlight to our leaves. And I'm going to do If I do the outside of this side, then I do the upside of the middle. Makes sense? If you're doing this side, you're gonna do the paints up, the paints up. We don't change sides and put the paint on the same side. Now take a darker value. I'm going to take plantation pine and then I'm going to add it to the opposite side of these leaves. Same type of load. This time you can see it. I'm going to go on the bottom. You see that? A little bit. And then we don't know how far they're gonna go under our flowers right now. And I mean, we're not looking for realistic, downright realistic ones. We're just fanciful ones, right? Whimsical, fanciful, whatever. So for right now, let's call those done for the moment. We'll put them on the side. And back to our flowers. Okay, here's the crazy part. Or, no, okay semi-crazy part. You remember those um, hypnotists that used to put a wheel or, or I don't know, I'm thinking like the twilight zone when, or, or something and they do a spiral and it would turn and you know draw you into it. Well anyways, we're gonna draw that. So you're gonna start at a point on the outside of your of your circle and you're going to start and come around and get smaller and smaller and smaller like that so do that on all of them the the narrower i'll just tell you right now okay <laughs> the narrower the distance is between your line and the edge and and your line in itself means you're going to have to keep because we're cutting this. You're gonna have to keep cutting, 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 cutting. The wider it is, the, the less cutting and the, the less petals your rose will have. So I'll do one close to the edge and I'll show you. And yeah, it's not gonna be perfect. Like see, I, Melissa likes not perfect things. See how I got too close on this side? See, that bothers me. Disastrous. Doesn't bother Melissa, but it bothers me. It just depends on what the thing is. Like, I tried so hard to get my leaf just the right size that I cut it all the way too thin. I'm not using that one. 
Oh, I'm muted. No, I'm not. Okay. okay. So you're not starting in the middle. You're starting on the outside. Yeah. You want to start in the middle? Fine. Go ahead and start in the middle. And, and what does it matter? Could matter. No, because see, I just started in the middle and worked my way out, and that's fine too. Okay, so I got this. Cindy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're getting yep. very sleepy. sleepy. Yeah, no, you need to do this. You're getting very sleepy. <laughs> I'm not sure how this will come out, but we'll find out, won't we? Yeah, for sure. And you don't have to draw these on. You can just take your scissors and cut. Um, also, I just drew it on to show you what I'm doing. Now she tells us. But you can just go right to town and cut. So now I got two slinkies. See? Isn't that fun? <laughs> it really is. Awesome. I have two spiral cuts. Okay. Three roses. And I mean, I like that they're that it's painted instead of cardstock. Well, this way here you can match it with whatever it is you're working on. It's it's you know. It makes for, um, it's personalized, more well, or less. You know, you know how me and the imperfection. Yep. So on one of the paint I was using is maybe too thin or something. And so I have a lot of brush strokes. You have to shake it up real good. Well, I happen to like that texture look. Okay, that's fine. So, I like those variegated roses, you know? Yep. Oh, yes. The roses in San Diego are gorgeous at the hotel. Different colors. I have white roses outside my door, and every once in a while, there'll be a little pink one, and then before I know it, the next bunch will come out with little pink streaks going through them. Oh, cool. I love that. If you want, oh, how's this for a thing? If you wanted designs on your painted roses rubber stamp stencil so rubber stamp you can do a rubber stamp on here you can do um, stencil you can stencil a design on here and that could give you some texture to your whimsical fanciful flowers i'm going to take a smaller round brush, um, round handled brush. And I'm going to take my paper flowers and I'm going to start with the outside, outside cut cuttings that I created. And I'm going to start twirling it onto my brush. Now, if you don't want it, you can just use your fingers if you want. You don't have to use a brush. And just curl it between your fingers. Do you see how I've got that rolled? So I'm just rolling. Rolling the um, spiral around itself. See that? Did you start from the inside or the outside? I started from the outside. And then what's going to happen is you're going to get to the inside and you're going to have this little thingy left over. And that's going to be like the base of your flower that you're going to glue it onto. So I'm going to let this thing unwind now 
and you'll watch what happens. You have a rose. So you can unwind it a little bit more and make it bigger, but you have this rose. So what I'm going to do is press it down and I'm going to try and with all my might squish it. <laughs> but once you roll it together, it's pretty strong. Because so, then it turns the, the petals over. It turns the petals over, see? So now you can, we, we'll take a glue gun and we'll glue the bit, the bottom piece, the bottom flap, we'll glue it all on there. And then you can put a, a Swarovski crystal if you want. Oh, look at hers! Beautiful! You can put a Swarovski crystal in there. You can put a pearl in there. You can put any kind of beads you have that would fit. So let's see how big this one is. Okay, so let me stand up to crush my rose. Oh, look at that one. That's really pretty. And, and I did one side bright pink and the other side uh, like a softer pink. Yeah. Because again, I didn't want it to be perfect. I wanted it. And I love the way, whoop, standing up now. Yeah, I'm going to stand up and try and press down on this, but I don't think standing up's helping it. Just kind of. Okay. Hurts my thumb. <laughs> I know. My, and you know what? All the pencil around the edges just makes it look really Right. Let's see if you put that on there. Dusty Rose. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope to see you next week then. So she'll join us for our next project. And make sure you're signed up so you get an email with the supply list ahead of time. You'll know what you need to have ready to, to join us. So much fun when we're doing. That would be awesome. Yep, that would be awesome. I find it more fun the more the more the merrier. Yeah, she got tired of me by myself real quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we could, one day we did two hours where we recorded and then we continued on for four more hours. Well, that was our, that was our journal, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, we just kept talking and showing each other what we were doing and it was so much fun. It was fun. That's fun, but see how this will then determine your design. And for instance, so if I only used those three, okay, I would then take a pencil. Let me see if I can find, oh, I'll use one of these sepia colored pencils, okay? So maybe you can see this on camera. I don't know, make some kind of crazy line. And if you don't like it, just erase it. So, and then you can also decide, okay, maybe I'll put a leaf here like that, see? And then if I put these two leaves over here, I don't know, like that. So then we can have a vine kind of growing out here. Some kind of thing. I mean, and if it, if you don't like the lines, don't use them. You don't even have to erase them if you don't want to. Um, Kind of just get crazy, I think. And you can have little lines going off if you want.
I don't know. It's just, I'm being erratic. Is that a word? That's, you know, kind of. Wait, what is that? You don't have it perfectly defined and planned out? I told you when I started it, I didn't know what was going to happen. I'm so excited. I think I might be rubbing off on you a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay. So we, I'm going to plug in my gun full of glue. I'll be right back. I think everyone, everyone has junk in their house. Well, not junk, but good intentions. So I have a whole bunch of fun stuff. And now I have to, wait, aren't those fun? It probably doesn't show up very much. So I might not use that one. Too big for that one. Ooh, look what I got. A little dragonfly. I don't know if these are real Swarovski crystals or just wannabes, but oops. But I think I can stick those in there and I think it'll look cool. See how they sparkle? I like that. So that's what I'm going to do. Is my glue gun hot? I'm going to put the glue underneath on that base piece. Oh, and this is another thing nice about this here, this mat is a Teflon mat. It's supposed to go in your oven. And I, I think you can even cook cookies on it, bake cookies on it. So when you stick glue on it, it won't stick to it. So I'm going to put some glue here. And then I'm going to hold that down, put some more glue in the center, and then drop, whoops, without touching it and burning my finger, drop the And I usually have tweezers here. So if I need to um, tighten up my rows, I can. So we'll let that dry. If I didn't get underneath, um, I'll go back after. But put that aside and do that to these. But see, there you got your, those roses are done. Now I'm gonna put this stuff aside and let, let the magic begin. You have your drawing, right? You have all these squibbly things that don't go anywhere and do anything. So you're gonna take your glue gun and you're gonna try and be consistent, but not guaranteed. So I kind of, so it's, it's not, this is Melissa's favorite part in life. It's not consistent. It's not, you know, um, perfect. So it's kind of crazy, but do you know what? It doesn't matter. And if you don't want what you put here, you can kind of peel this off. You don't have to work at it a little bit, but you can. On the sides, if you want to not be too um, design, you know, if you don't care 
about the design being really like this. What you can do is just squiggle. And that's why I said you have to have a lot of sticks because it's just gonna be, I don't know if you can see it, if I put it on an angle, it's just kind of squiggly. And you just squiggle everywhere. But you're gonna run through, like I already ran out of glue. So, <laughs> so that's, why, that's why you have to have more glue sticks. I'm not sure what I want to do, but I'm going to go with with a um, I'm going to go with a midnight green, and I'm going to start painting with that and see what happens. So I'm just going to paint over this, and I'm trying to make sure that I don't build up puddles of paint inside my design. So that's why I'm following the design and twirling it around so that I don't build up puddles. And it might take a couple coats of this to get it to be solid. And everything in the painting world has an ugly stage. And then it gets better. And it's like magic. Yeah. All of a sudden, you'll look down and say, oh my god, it's beautiful. Does that show my, see my design? Yeah. And it doesn't look, just look like glue being spread around. It really looks like a design. And you can do this all the way around the edges too. And remember I was showing people on Facebook, when you do your edges, if you pull against the edge like that, make sure you wipe off the top because you'll create lumps of paint which will dry and then you'll have a hard time when you sand it off it'll it won't look good necessarily so let me blow dry that and make sure if you do use a blow dryer you don't blow all your leaves and flowers away <laughs> <laughs> or or your paint puddles dry and you don't want to use a heat gun because a heat gun might uh, soften the glue <laughs> so use a blow dryer and don't leave the blow dryer on one concentrated space to heat it up okay, i'm going to add some more paint i want this to be a solid dark green color i'm going to do one more coat of the dark green Now we have that on here. I am going to take some Hauser medium green. And I think, you know that fancy dancy fan brush? Our fan brush. I love this brush. And I'm gonna load it with some of that green. And I'm going to be on like a 90 degree angle to my surface and I'm going to dust my surface. So you can load your brush up and you can dust it with the grain, against the grain, you can do whatever you want. I'm kind of, it's going to, I hope, look very like, um, you know when copper starts to tarnish? I'm going to wipe my brush off and I'm going to go see grass. See what happens when I put this on. That's better. Because right now the only place on here that's this, the salmon color is this one thing. But we could take our little deer foot brush 
a fancy dancy little deer foot brush, load it with some of that color, and we can put little pom pom flowers. So Cindy, when you were putting down when you were putting down the um, the glue, it, you were putting the swirls with the intention kind of like to make a vine look that you had in your mind. Okay, so it wasn't really random because now it's really shaping up. I know you have this vision in your head what you're going to do. I'm really glad I'm watching and not just doing it while you're doing it so I can have an idea of what I want to do before I start. So we have little puffs of that salmon and then I'm going to take a little, you have a little filbert brush or you can use a flat brush. I didn't show you this trick. So with the flat brush, now I'll load it in the that turquoisey color. And I can do these little set down leaves. And that repeats the color. You can do that with your filbert. Filbert brush, I'm doing it with a flat. Okay, now you know where you're gonna, your flowers are gonna live, I hope. Take your, your leaves that you created. and place those in there. Now, I don't have any of that, these bright greens in here. So I could go back in with a dry brush and take like, what did we put for a highlight? Foliage green. And if I wanted to, to repeat the color with the foliage green, pick up some of that with my fan brush and I can just hit some of the high points of the glue. Now I have an idea of where my flowers are going. I'm going to take those off and I'm going to glue my leaves on. Make sure you kind of curl them a little bit. You can put this on here and stick that And then I have this thing called sugar. It's diamond dust. You see that? Diamond dust. And um, it's very, very coarse particles that my girlfriend likes to sugar everything with. So I'm going to take some paste. Now you can use different kinds of adhesive. She likes using Golden's Matte Gel. Take a little bit of that. I'm gonna mix a little bit of water in with my paste because the paste tends to be thick and I want it a little watered down. You, you want it thick, but you don't want it that thick. So I'm going to take an old, that's what I use, my old scrubby brushes, scrubby brushes, and pick up some of this paste and I'm going to put it around my squashed flower. And you don't want to get it on your, um, bead in there either. Try not to get it on that either. You also want to have a piece of paper underneath this when we get going. And then take a pinch of this. And 
and put it on here. So if you didn't get some in an area, you just go take your brush and add more glue. And then you can pick up the excess and put it in there. Play with this all day. Here you have it. Oh my gosh. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I gotta take a picture of that. <laughs> Dude on. If we wanted to get really crazy, put a dot of that there. All these little tufts that you created. Put some gel on it. That came out so pretty. Okay, let's see. Those blue flowers really pop. I kind of like that on this little. Yeah. The, the tufts looked. Uh, the tufts looked kind of naked, but look at them now. Yeah. That really is. I mean, that's not just glitter. That diamond uh, sugar look. It's just it's blowing me away. Yeah, it's not glitter. I do have glitter and we could have used glitter, but I just love the diamond dust effect. Yeah. And if it's on areas you don't want it, you just go over and take it off. Okay, so this little dude here, we can have him flying in our garden. Yeah. What do you think? We have little scrubby brushes if we wanted to. I'm going to load my dry scrubby brush with some of that, um, what, did I, what did I call it? Sea glass. And I'm going to add some of that to my leaf. That makes the leaf look like it belongs on the piece better, I think. And then you can take your brush and some of that midnight. You can go in and deepen some of the shade. And if your peaks don't show up, you can deepen them. So it's just a matter of playing. What I've done? Yes, of course we do. Yes. Hold on, let me get it ready for you. Okay. Yay, there we go. Yay. That's amazing. So there's so many glares from all the different screens, but. Oh, okay. We'll have something good. That's really nice. Look at it, she's like. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think, Melissa? Well, I think that I'm going to be up experimenting with the glue. I learned how to make paper roses that are different than anything I've ever made before. And I'm blown away by Julie's beautiful um, interpretation and participation. It makes me so happy. And your box top rocks. Ah. It's definitely like gun metal. It's guns and roses. Guns and roses. Yeah, it matches your outfit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm done. And thank you everyone who showed up tonight for the um, Zoom Paint with Heart Studio with our, our guns and roses. <laughs> Glue guns and paper roses. I hope that, I hope that uh, you had a good evening here with us. Thank you to Jilly and Sue and Linda and Liz and Kathy.
And hopefully we'll see you all again next week. And those of you now watching us on replay, I hope you, I hope you please join us. Please join us because we are having a, lots of organic fun. <laughs> that new word, everyone's using organic, organic fun. So until uh, next <laughs> if you're watching this in a replay, you can still communicate with us, send us questions or, or comments to Twitter or Facebook. And do they get to see the chat? Do they see the chat bar in the replay? Hmm, I'm not sure yet with Zoom. Okay. <laughs> so um, if you don't and you would like to sign up for our newsletter, uh, newsletter, there I go again, sign up for our email list to get weekly notifications, typically on Monday, and I don't send out more than the one so that you don't ban me, of what our, our upcoming episode is going to be about with a, um, a picture of the supply list, then you can go to Paint With Heart on Cindy Harrison Art, Paint With Heart. So if you're on Facebook, you can go to my Paint With Heart page. Um, so then you'll be notified and you can join us all prepared with your, with your surface and supplies. So until, uh, do you want to say goodbye and then I'll do my tagline? Good night, everybody. And always remember to paint with heart. Good night.